it's the day before Halloween, Samhain, Samhain, and we have a great opportunity this year, uh, one that we haven't witnessed probably in our lifetime, which is a full moon on Halloween. Now, as a practitioner who was initiated uh, many years ago in black witchcraft or the more sabbatic left-hand path um, teachings derived around 1734 tradition, um, the Bonesmen, and similar uh, Anglo-Saxon oriented um, witchcraft uh, conceptualizations. Um, I have a fairly consistent connection to um, the cycles of the year and how they relate to nature and how they represent and mirror um, concepts of change, growth, disorder, all of these things within the individual. Now, the great thing about Samhain or Halloween is from a spiritual perspective, a magical one of a uh, witch, warlock, a practitioner, is that we draw from, in Luciferianism, many different records in ancient cultures, traditions, all of these things that we have uh, to fuel and continually enhance and transform the Luciferian tradition um, that people didn't really have even 80 years ago. And it's great to know that we have these tools and this information. And while my initiation has always, especially from the beginning until now, I've had a strong um, intuition and instinct for specific aspects of what I call demonic guidance, my daemon, my inherent desire, um, being drawn to specific areas that open up and kind of present the knowledge that I need. Um, to enhance my work and to fuel my path workings, my initiation itself. All of these things come together in kind of a synchronicity. And that's one of the keys of you're doing something right. Even when you have mistakes, even when you have some setbacks of failure, the overall momentum is powerful. So, as we know, Samhain in the Old World, October 31st, was the end of the old year, bringing forth a new one. Now, within our calendar and our, our culture and the modern world, uh, we can look at it as we're going into, from the autumn, into the winter. So this is a part of the cycle um, which inherently is always recognized as misrule and the in-between state. Um, one of the revered deific mass goddesses, Hecate or Hecate, call her Bendis, call her uh, Codes, or the many names and epithets that Hecate um, presents one of her strongest ones which a good number of people tend to stray away from is a very terrifying powerful um a cosmic goddess um the goddess 
the power of the crossroads. That's the in-between state, uh, a kind of balance, but also in chaos and disorder to where our lineal time, our, our order within this world, the veil is kind of torn a bit and made very thin to where the dead, the other world, finds increasing um, kind of intertwining with ours. And I love this period of time because for someone who uh, regularly is always doing some type of working, um, of course, privately with my own spirituality, and I'm very independent that way, I'm always doing things. Invocations, talismanic workings, um, it's just a part of what I do and who I am. Um, you have, when you do a working, for instance, you have your aim, your goal, your visualized overall kind of generic concept of what you're doing this for, what you seek. Sometimes it's more specific, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's general. Um, and always as you move towards that and you see that uh, synchronicity um, and the forces of nature, um, the energies that you are controlling and shaping and changing, bring you to that. That is the essence of the work, how your daemon um, has kind of communed in, in convocation, um, fueled your initiation, if I'm making sense. That is a key to success. So results, validation, validation for you subjectively. And it's going to manifest in the objective world, but everyone else isn't going to see the kind of spinning atoms and all the interweaving and all of the things that are moving underneath the surface. And it's going to look very naturally ordered and attained, even if it's uh, perceived as good luck. That is a key indicator of manifesting your true will. Now, when you do these things, often you have things like hauntings. You have a poltergeist activity, what I would call a strange paranormal activity, doors opening, closing, um, hearing whispers, um, things moving, things disappearing, um, all kinds of strange occurrences. Well, that is kind of side, kind of like residual or perhaps uh, disruptive interactions. That's not um, the goal of the, the work of Lucifer and magic. But all those things are wonderful. And I indulge in those. I, I love that. And for some it can be scary or strange. But since I was a kid, uh, finding ways of experiencing that is like a catharsis. Um, so Halloween is the time when it's generally accepted in the ancient world and, and for many in the modern that the shadow, uh, the night side is more prevalent in our waking consciousness. This is a time of uh, dying and being reborn. And you're not so much um, bound by cosmic linear time there's the other world or a cosmic, a casual aspects to consider. Halloween, for me, um, is great because of, obviously, my Luciferian witchcraft practices. 
but also because I'm a huge uh, horror and traditional Halloween enthusiast. I've always loved uh, the interplay of art, fiction, and imagery, uh, even pageantry in the concept of Halloween, modern Halloween horror. All of these things are like inspiring and I'm able to obviously with a rational mind separate uh, fantasy from what I'm doing as a black adept, a magus. Um, but I equally indulge in that aspect of modern culture in Halloween. What are you doing in terms of workings this time of year? So I've always talked about in Luciferian Initiation, the Triad of the Morning Star, is establishing practices, beginning with philosophy, and for those drawn from that beyond the philosophy, if your will is to seek a more initiatory path of the practice of ritual magic or various methods of sorcery, or whether you're just a uh, apply the philosophy um, type of individual. What are you doing in terms of adapting and applying these in your daily life? With all the things that can be distractions or uh, potentially on the surface clash with those, Luciferians have to when applying my work, it's not just about reading the book and saying, hey, that's interesting. Hey, that's, I didn't know that. Um, it's about seeing beyond that and adapting it to you. Not in the, even as a loose structure of initiation that I have in my grimoires, they're gateways to adapt and mutate, transform to the individual adept because essentially with your practice of Luciferian magic and the uh, attainment of the daemon, your true will, your patron spirit, embracing the anti-cosmic, not as an abstract concept, but establishing your command and your uh, mediation with the daemon, you open up um, so many things for your life. So these things have to adapt and flow normally in pretty much consistency with your daily life, family, work, um, things you do for fun, uh, uh, things you indulge in. And there's a give and take there. So it has to adapt and flow uniquely to you. Um, trying to take my works and even the outlined uh, process of structure, like the Triad of the Morning Star or um, like the grade workings in the Necrominion of establishing consistent practice, um, it's not about following those until you get bored of it or can't do it anymore. It's about loosely finding that initiatory expression, that which inspires you. That's how you know it's working and then validating what occurs. So Halloween, um, I do a lot of workings leading up and my type of workings are not always the circle, the full ceremonial uh, thing. I have a very, and always uh, have focused on having, well, I have a lot of tools, especially now at my, my hands. Um, when I started out, you couldn't find hardly anything left-hand path unless you made it specifically or it was a one-off. Now there's a lot more. The Luciferian Apotheca has made a focus, and my guidance with 
uh, as being the co-owner in the direction of bringing and creating and you know it, it isn't a commercial way in the sense that we're um, offering a product but that product is still just a thing it has to work for you it has to inspire you it's a tool so whether you use a lot of tools like a full ceremonial set or like me on many days i can't bust out the robes and do all these things i have many things going on i have to set aside time for that but i can do the very minimalistic type of inner workings and offerings in a very like honest consistent way which doesn't interrupt uh, much of my cycles of what I do um, Halloween on the full moon libations pouring of wine water uh, honey and water whatever it is a libation with an uh, a hymn and invocation to Hakate, um, the forces of the adversary that you attune to in this time of year, whether it's the demonic feminine or the masculine, it's, it's the deific mask that the energy inspires you. And uh, burning of incense, an invocation um, of any type that you want, pouring of the libation into the ground. All of those things and types of necromantic workings, calling the ancestral shades, the dead, to visit you, to join with you. Um, and then having this dreaming cycle during your hours of, of sleep, of attending and rising, in the concept of astral projection or dream projection to different things to the Sabbath and that symbol of inherent desire manifest as the devil or the horn god or the dark goddess these can join and these are found expressions within you that's what infernal union as i indicate samael lilith uh, is about on the rational sense is that black alchemy of enhancing and bringing forth and shaping your daemon, your uh, black flame, your divine, unique uh, genius for whatever it is you do in this world. So think about that and consistent practice not falling into a trend, um, really digging into whatever you're focused on in your magical initiatory workings. That's the essence of the left-hand path. So anyway, um, thanks for watching this. Subscribe if you haven't already. Spread the channel. And tell me what you want to see, questions you have within that that context and I'll uh, I'll do my best to doing more of these frequently. Banama Araman.